Hey there, I'm Greg, and thank you for stopping by. This is The Astro Architect, a new video devlog series where I'll be going over each week what I'm working on with regards to my new game, Eon's Ascent. Eon's Ascent is what I'd call a deep strategy card game that uses a custom deck of 84 cards that I designed and uh, just got the printed version this weekend. Pretty stoked about it. Um, there are seven suits in the deck. Each suit is ruled or uh, overseen by an Archon card like this guy, Orin. Orin is orange, but this is the prototype before I thought to add the color codes behind the name. So that's an orange card. And then you have Xanthi. She's another Archon. This card has been redesigned, not just for the color code, but because I wasn't super happy with the artwork. So things are changing really fast, but the deck is stable. I know what cards are in here. I know what the designs should be. This is what we call an aspect card. These are the cards you'll use to attack the Archons that I just showed you in the game. And uh, yeah, so it's a deep strategy card game with elements of action RPG. Uh, there are um, missions to go on and things like that. Uh, what your objective is in the game is to liberate a number of planets, star systems, and galaxies from the control of the Hypostasis, the Urge and his Archons. The Hypostasis faction has complete control over the material world and your goal as a purveyor of chaos and emanation from the divine fullness is to basically come into the material world cause as much chaos as possible and unseat the archons at every opportunity you can so this is a fairly new idea my first video game and my first passion project where i'm actually taking my skills as a web developer of some 20 years and applying it to something personal and fun. Uh, one thing to learn about Greg here is I've been a web developer for a very long time. And in all that time, I've never taken it upon myself to pursue a passion project with writing code. Um, I'm very selfish with my time when it comes to passion projects. For the last six years, I've written and recorded over 400 songs painted over 300 paintings, and um, I know I have the ethic to do it. I just had never done it, and so now we are, and this is a thing that's happening. And I'm not starting from scratch here. You're catching me a month into development, so the game's already playable, which is really cool. Both physically, it's playable, but it's much easier to play in a virtual format where you don't have to keep track of dice and keep adding numbers up to calculate hit points and stuff like that. But some people are into that, you know? I'm just, I prefer the mobile version. And it will eventually be available for desktop as well in the next, before it releases, it'll be available for desktop. So, how do you play? Well, why don't I show you? All right, here we are on the start game screen. All you do is you click play game and it dumps you right into it. But in the future versions, and I'll show you this in the next devlog, you will have a level select menu where you first choose a galaxy to do battle in. Then you choose a star system. Then you scan the planets and find out which planet the Archons are at that you can find. And once you select a planet, then you begin the game proper. But that little bit of extra interactivity gives me the chance to inject mission lore and things like that, which I think will keep the game interesting as this is the main component of the game is playing the card game. So we'll click play game and before we can start, we need to scan for anomalies. And the Demiurge is also trying to find his Archons because they have gone somewhat wayward over the eons. And uh, he's trying to get them back under his thumb. So you're by both fighting for the very soul of the Archons themselves. So not much is at stake here, no pressure. We'll roll, I rolled a seven, cause I'm awesome. So I get to start. And the first Archon we're going to face down is Cygnus. Cygnus spawned in with a ran, each Archon spawns in with a random number of hit points. Uh, I won't tell you how many. 
uh, but it, it, there's a random hit point range that they spawn in with and it can vary quite wildly so you never know quite what you're gonna get each time you start a match then you click draw card when it's your turn the first turn you always get an eighth card but be warned so does the demiurge so uh, you gotta take that into account I'm going to attack with this 11 card. The reason I'm choosing the 11 is because it gives me the highest damage multiplier. Now, I could change my mind actually, because combos are also a thing, but let's keep it simple. We'll click attack, the Demiurge will take his turn, and then we'll see the round results. He played a chain. I knew I should have played that chain combo I saw, but no! I was thinking of you guys and I didn't want to confuse you, but the Demiurge jumped the shark. I actually won that exchange. That surprises me because he had a 9, a 10, and an 11 versus my 11. You might be wondering, well, Greg, that doesn't seem right. He played more cards. He did, but he got the lower damage multiplier. So that means that I take the round. That's one of the elements of surprise in the game is that you can play the highest valued card, but if you don't roll well as well, your attack may get blocked and the Demiurges may go through instead, which means you don't get the score for that round. The scores are tabulated at the end of the game. Now, as you can see, I've got a big yellow warning on the screen saying that Cygnus is coalescing. That means it's his turn to deal damage. He will roll a D7 and he will deal that amount of damage to my HP directly at the end of this round. So my goal, whenever he coalesces, is always to do as much damage as possible. It can't stop him, but it gets me closer to capturing him, and capturing him makes him stop hurting me and heals me. So I can't play this green card because Cygnus is green. You can only play cards that don't match the color of the card you're attacking. And I, the only exception there is the 11 card. The 11 card, which we just saw an exchange using, um, it, takes, uh, it takes to any target. So we're going to attack with the 10 this time. And that time, I didn't quite get there, did I? And I had the lower ranked card, so I took 1 HP of damage plus the coalescence damage from Cygnus. So in total, I took three damage that turn. As you can see, there's some improvements needed to the user interface. That previous screen is a little large, and so you might not notice that your HP is getting depleted. Uh, sound effects would also do to help there, train people's ear to know what it sounds like when you get hurt, that way they know to look at the counter. But um, that's the role your Demiurge, the Demiurge doesn't take damage. He's a god, so you gotta watch out for him. Uh, whereas you had to take mortal form to materialize in the material world. So you're much more fragile. Your, your grasp on cohesion can be shattered fairly easily. So do watch your hit points. I'm gonna play this combo, and it's not a great idea, but I'm playing it to show you how combos work and to show you what happens when you lose. So one and two and three add up to six. I'm gonna target Cygnus, wait for the Demiurge. Now he played a 10, the difference between 10 and six is four. So if I lose this exchange, I take four damage, which will bring me down to 42. I lost the exchange and as you see, it brought me down to 42. Um, Sometimes this interface is a little buggy, which is one thing I got to work out. Uh, it will show that I lose when we attack different targets, but right now there's only one target, so you won't be able to see that. But overall, the game is totally playable, and uh, I'm super stoked about it. So where are we going from here? Well, the goal is quite simple. I want some extra income. And it seems like this game is going to shape up to be something that I can publish and sell. So my goal is to build a community through these devlogs of people that want to help me test the game. 
Now you'll see I just got an error. The reason I got an error is because I wasn't paying attention to my card selection and I selected a green eight for a combo and Cygnus's color is green so his messenger refuses to attack him. So that means I have to change my tactic here and instead of playing that I'm just gonna play this, this nine. I have two eights but I can't play the green eight. So I'm going to have to attack with that 9, which makes me much sadder because it's not as strong of an attack. But that's part of the strategy of the game, you know? you got to know when to hold him. I lost that, took 2 damage. You can avoid damage when you're low on HP by not attacking and just choosing to discard. Like, for example, right now, I don't have a great play available to me. And it's early game, so I'm going to discard. And your goal while playing is to capture four Archons to win the game. You will have to play the game more than once to liberate a planet completely because you'll need to capture all seven Archons, but each game lasts until a fourth Archon is captured. Or you run out of HP. That's a possibility as well. I have this 678 that looks so tasty, but I can't play it because the 6 is green. I'm going to have to just play the 8. Ah, oh, I lost the roll. And I take some damage. Now Cygnus is coalescing again. That means I'm going to take more damage. So, I didn't get any better cards. I'm going to have to discard, I think. That way it'll at least minimize the amount of damage I take. The downside to that is the Demiurge gets the score points against Cygnus. Especially playing something like that, although it looks like he only played a 1, 2, 3. Yeah, but see that 1, 2, 3, which adds up to 6 just did six, uh, 36 damage, so it's pretty, it's pretty strong. Finally, a high ranking card. You know what sucks about it? It's green. We'll discard this too. So the goal to wrap up the game is going to be to implement that level select screen that I was talking about. Finish up with uh, the mobile version of the game by adding in-app messaging, uh, flash notifications, not, not push notifications, but just notifications that say, you took five damage, or um, an Archon is inbound, or the Demiurge has taken his turn. You know, even messaging as simple as that, I think, would make the game feel a lot more user friendly. Uh, the level select screens, the flash notice notices, and special abilities. One of the things that makes this game truly exciting for me is each card has a special ability, as does an Archon. So right now you're playing the base version of the game that doesn't use special abilities on either side. Even though the Archon can coalesce, all they're doing is damage. None of the buffs, debuffs, uh, lose your turn, that kind of stuff, none of that's happening right now. And so I feel that that's going to make gameplay much more interesting and you're going to have to strategize a little bit more. And then finally, there's evocations, which is what the aspect cards can do. And that ranges from stealing a card from the Demiurge's hand to um, being able to heal yourself, to being able to shield yourself from attacks, as well as target all Archons on the battlefield at once, because there are scenarios where there's as many as five Archons on the battlefield that I've encountered. I'm sure it's possible that all seven could show up at once, but it hasn't happened to me yet. It would be statistically quite unlikely. Uh, it would mean the Demiurge would have to draw basically all sevens, I think. I'm not really quite sure. His AI is getting better and better every time I tweak it. So you have this notion of capture piles. You can see the buttons at the top and the bottom, and then you have a discard pile. 
This card pile is important because it lets you glance through and when a new Archon is incoming, you can look at the borders to see what the majority of the cards are. And so when a new Archon is coming, it can kind of give you an idea of what's left in the deck. Is it counting cards a little bit? But that's okay. It's, it's a strategy game, not Vegas. So I'm between a rock and a hard place right now, man. The best attack I can do is this seven card or these two fours. I'll try the two fours. They've probably been staring me in the face for a number of rounds. Yes! All right, we're getting close to the end game with old Siggy here. So let's see what we can do. We've got a seven and an eight, but no six to pair it with. We've also got four and a five. All we need is a six that we can play, but we don't have one. So my best play that I can do right now is this eight. Oh, come on. Five and five is 10. This puts me at the least risk. So I'm going to play this combo. Discarding would keep me at zero risk, but I don't want to lose my points. Nice. One more round and he's gone. Yep. So now I just need to come up with a play and I've got this pair of sevens. So even though only 14 points are needed, I'm locking in those 14 points. If I win the dice roll, I capture Cygnus because seven and seven is 14, which is the minimum damage I can do. Actually, it's higher than that, but, uh, yes. Now, that is about all the time I think we'll take for the demo today. As you can see, I just captured Cygnus. He's in my capture pile. I healed seven points of damage. I'm pretty happy guy. Now, gameplay would continue as normal with me optimizing and discarding cards from my hand. Right now I've got a six, a six, and a six, and a four, and a four. That's a full house, so I'm gonna hold on to that. And then I'll discard the others, but you get the point. Eventually, a new Archon will show up. So how long? Well, at least three turns. After three turns, you get what's called a stalemate shuffle. And the stalemate shuffle uh, brings the Archons out of the deck and a random one gets chosen and put into play. At least that's one of the things on my to-do list this week so that you don't experience long periods of where's the Archon. All right, that'll about do it for me this week, folks. Thank you for tuning in to the Astro Architect. I'm Greg, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you're excited about the project, jump down in the comments and tell me what you thought of this little game demo. Um, pretty soon we'll be opening the door to beta testers and uh, there will be a website that I'll be standing up fairly soon as well that will let you glance through the cards and check out the card compendium along with lore for each of the cards so stay tuned <laughs>